I have been using instant structs for some time now and just a day or two ago I realized there is not many resources out there for them and that's a shame because I think they are pretty useful so I'm gonna create a quick tutorial to familiarize with them and give one example of how I use them and how you can use them too. There's many ways that you can use them because they are essentially containers for other structs so you can imagine different uses but we're gonna go over one so let's create a new class or not a new class let's create a struct so I'm gonna create a structure and name it consumable data this is gonna be our example struct and let's do quantity and we can do also maybe name or something doesn't matter you can imagine populating it with your own stuff here and before we go into this I'm just gonna open up the third person character and just give you a quick run through of how you can create instance struct. Uh, also this probably works only for 5.4 and 5.3. I think in 5.2 you have to enable a plugin for this. Just be aware this is a newer feature so we won't have it in some other versions. Let's create a new thing and let's name it instance struct and you can select that structure. If you compile and look in here the actual value of this instance struct is any other struct. So if you select our consumable data let's compile we can see we get our things but if you change the structure you're gonna get different stuff in here and that's the general idea of instant structs so now let's see how we can actually manipulate this let's say you want to set a new struct so we can imagine this being empty so let me go to none what you can do is set values so you can use this set instant struct value to basically say what struct and data i want to put into this instant struct and in here what you can do is consumable data and we can make it and add our own stuff we can also have that well, let's say we have our consumable data in here and we can just plug it in here it's basically a wildcard so you can set it up to be any value here and after you do this when you want to get some information out of the instant struct you can do get instant struct value and then you need to break your data struct or just pass it along so i use this break to just change the wildcard to the specific struct and then i can use it but basically there's different ways there so that's the most basic stuff so let's go into an example let's say i have my consumable data and let's create another struct and let's call this struct item struct so this is going to be a general struct that we're going to use in our data table to define our items so let's open it up let's say item name or something i'm just going to populate it briefly we can do item name we can do item actor and let's do item data so for now we're gonna do actor in here just to set it there so the general idea of what i'm setting up in here is you have your item you're going to define the name of it the actor which is actual physical thing so let's say your item is a gun when you maybe press a button you activate this actor and it puts a gun in your hands we're gonna go through this but that's the general idea and then you have item data and i'm gonna name it instance struct let's save and let's now create our data table and we need item struct let's click ok or i should name it items but that's fine so we can create a new item and now in here we can do consumable data and the name can be health potion of course for actors we can deal with that later but this is kind of an idea now we can say let's say this heals 50 and this is kind of unnecessary honestly so we would have one thing for this specific thing for the, your own structs you can do a bunch of stuff so for example maybe there is a unique healing animation and you can put here that animation displayed later when it is processed or you can do a bunch of stuff in here so you don't have to keep simple like float and string value name value stuff like that so now let me show you a practical example so let's say when i press one on the keyboard something happens so we can do get data table row and we actually haven't set up the row so let's name it potion let's save it let's try to get it out of here so now we have only one thing here so let's say when we get our item if you want now to for seconds of stuff to happen and then we activate our item so what i'm going to do in here is create a blueprint and this blueprint is going to be an actor for this i will probably create one base class for all of the usable items to have a generic way to deal with them here after that from this one class we can create then a bunch of different types of items so for example healing items or guns or whatever I wouldn't go deeper into inheritance there I like the kind of shallow version where you can maybe have like one base class to just define stuff but for now I'm just gonna directly deal with one class so you don't have to deal with more generic setup that you do for the actual project so I'm gonna name it healing potion and what we're gonna do in here now in here I'm gonna do healing potion of course this might be your base class that is maybe called item usable or something like that but you're gonna do healing potion and what we need to do is pass the data in here so what i'm going to do is name this consumable data but it needs to be instanced 
struct. And I'm gonna expose this, let's compile save. Let's go back to the character and now let's break the item struct. Let's uh, break this and see, okay, we have healing potion object reference. So now what we can do here is spawn actor of class. So I want to spawn a reactor. And when you're doing this, I would also suggest dealing with this. And later when you are getting the value from the instant struct, I would also suggest dealing with any arrows because it's gonna help you a lot. We don't want to leave this hanging, but for now I'm just gonna leave it there. Uh, and to make it simple, you'll probably attach this actor to your hand or something, if it's like an item. For now, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna spawn it in front of our character. So let's do get actor location. We need actor forward vector, and I'm just gonna multiply this so we can get a point in front of the player. We can probably do like 100 centimeters there. And let's do this. And yeah, one important thing that I forgot to do is in here we need a class reference for our actors. Let's do it like this. And now we can connect it in here. And of course, when you are working with data tables, it's probably best to do a soft class reference if you have many items, just because you don't want this to be directly referenced in the memory. But again, for the sake of the tutorial, I don't want to spend a bunch of time managing that. So we spawn our item. Now, because we know our base class has exposed our consumable data and it is instant struct, we can just directly pass our data there and let's do always spawn. So that should be fine. And let's say our healing potion has a cube. Let's do 0.3, just something that we can see but not interact with. So now when the game starts, what you're gonna do is get our consumable data. And now we need to get the instant struct value. And let's print and we can break and do consumable data and quantity. Hopefully this works. So we should get 50 here. Uh, actually, we didn't put our item here, which I forgot. Now let's test it out. And we pressed one and we get our cube and our number. So just to further showcase the example, let's do two as a button press and let's do a similar thing where we go to data table and let's create a new entry. You can also maybe inside of here, when you do consumable, you could also do like enums that say, okay, what type of consumable this is. And to further this, let's say your healing potion gives you a lot of health, but maybe you have a bread or something that gives you five health. So you can do that type of stuff. But with this instance truck, you can also have different, way different types of items like guns, clothing, stuff like that. So let's do mana potion and let's name it here. Now we don't have, we have the healing potion. We are gonna leave the healing potion here and let's do 25, just to show you the difference. So what happens? Um, so I'm just gonna copy paste this to make it simpler, but you'd have a more unified system here. Maybe put certain functions and we can do mana potion. So let's click compile, save. And now when you press two on the keyboard, we get 25, but when you press one, we get 50. So you're basically using different items from the data table. So hopefully this gives you kind of an idea of how you can use instance structs. You can pass them along, you can unwrap them when you need them. So for example, maybe we didn't even need to unwrap them in here. Maybe we can unwrap them when a player presses one to heal, then we can extract information from that. Uh, so yeah, they're really useful. I haven't seen any information about them, but I started using them and I generally like them. So yeah, hopefully you're gonna find them useful too.